Over the years, I've done some videos on some pretty basic raised garden beds that I've built, but they weren't built to last more than a few seasons, and I lack the money and also the more advanced woodworking skills and tools to be able to create something more attractive and durable. This year I decided I was up to the task of building something beautiful and long-lasting, so come along as I take you through my project. The first thing that I needed to do was prepare a spot for the garden. So I cleared a section roughly 11 feet by 11 feet in my backyard between my solar shed and my trampoline. Then I headed to the local big box hardware store to get some treated lumber and set it out in the sun to dry. Now, before I go any further, I've gotten a lot of comments on these garden bed videos in the past that treated lumber is dangerous for garden beds. However, that is old information that is no longer true. Since 2004, pressure-treated lumber has not been impregnated with CCA, which is the dangerous substance that this issue came from. According to numerous authoritative and credible sources, including Texas A&M University's horticulture department, pressure-treated wood is totally safe for use in raised garden beds. Once the lumber was dried out a bit, I started cutting boards for the sides. I was able to find some 8 foot 1 by 6 treated boards that were a full inch thick instead of the normal 3 quarter inch thickness. They're also rated for direct contact with the ground with some weather shield coating, so they should last a long time for me. I used weather shielded 2 by 4 dimensional lumber for the vertical support pieces that tie everything together, and I left over 6 inches of 2 by 4 extending below the bottom board to anchor the bed into the ground. On each corner, I used 2x6 treated lumber on the opposite sides of the edge from the 2x4s to give the corners an even, clean appearance and also to provide plenty of strength with plenty of 2 inch and 3 inch exterior screws. After getting the two sides completed, I used some clamps to hold boards in place for the back side so that the whole assembly could stand up on its own and make it easier to work on. I used an extra 1x6 board and some clamps on the front to provide some temporary stability and hold the 8 foot by 8 foot box shape. Then before this thing got any heavier, I needed to dig some 6 inch holes for each of the support posts and corners to sit in so that the whole assembly will lie flush with the ground and will not shift and buckle or bulge over time. Then things got a lot more complicated. I knew that I wanted to put a 3 foot by 4 foot indented section on the front that would be covered by an arbor. This was for two reasons. One, so that I could reach the middle of the 8 by 8 bed without climbing into it, and two, so that I had something to attach some trellises to for some green beans. And this is where some woodworking experience came in handy. I had to visualize the dimensions and cut pieces to length while keeping everything as square, plumb, and level as I could. Believe me, that was not easy and I made a few minor mistakes here and there. After wrestling with the arbor section and finally getting it good enough, the finishing touch for the rest of the garden bed was to put some 2x4 boards along the top edge. I wanted to give it a nice appearance, but it also made it twice as strong. In the past, some of my garden beds have bulged on the sides over time as the soil in the bed settles and pushed outward. That is not going to happen this time. With the garden bed complete and the structure of the arbor in place, 
I wanted to fill the bed in with soil and amendments so I could plant some seeds as soon as possible. I started with some tree bark and natural mulch that I had left over from hauling firewood in the winter. Bark and other small dead wood matter helps with drainage and absorbs moisture as well while it slowly decomposes and fertilizes the soil. Then I added in a bunch of peat moss which will help prevent the soil from compacting to allow proper drainage. Then I ordered up two yards of a soil mixture from a local dirt and gravel company. The mixture was mostly sandy loam and compost, so again, that should help keep the bed from compacting. And finally, I put a yard of a manure and hummus mixture on top. Finishing touches to the whole build were to complete the arbor and trellises. Again, I had to take my time and use every trick up my sleeve to keep this thing square, plumb, and level. After getting the upper structure in place, I added some decorative braces and slats on top. For the trellis material, I used some black plastic chicken netting that it was exactly three feet wide and stapled it to each side post. And here's the finished product. I think it looks great, but even more importantly, it's highly functional and durable and will help me grow veggies and herbs for many years to come. Thanks for watching this video and supporting my channel. Please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it.